Alright guys, that's three on the bounce now, that must be some kind of record. That's basically a series now, isn't it? Anyway, as always, this is a selection of games that I've been playing throughout the past month. If you've got anything to add to this, or any recommendations, or any comments on the stuff that I've been playing, you know what to do. Stick it in the comments below. Anyway, let's get on with it. Capcom have absolutely dominated my march. Kickstarted by the Mega Man themed Battle Hub and the accompanying Battle Pass in Street Fighter 6, which I simply couldn't ignore, and then the release of the Resident Evil 2 Remake Fixed Camera Mod, which is an absolutely brilliant way to experience the 2019 remake, and one that serves as a nice reminder of how this classic survival horror presentation is still the best way to play games in this genre. Off the back of the latter, I went back to the original Resident Evil for what now appears to be my annual playthrough, and, no surprises, it's still an absolutely exceptional video game. The mansion and the way that the exploration flows as you uncover its secrets and unlock more areas, it's near perfect. The pacing is equally as flawless, changing up the locations just as you start to tire of one, and the way it throws increasingly more challenging enemies at you to not only test your abilities in combat, but also in ammo preservation, keeps the action tense throughout. It nails this thing that I love in a good survivor horror title, in that playing it for the first time will have you tiptoeing around every corner and clocking in at around 6-8 to eight hours, but once you're blessed with the knowledge as to what is around every corner, you can blast through the thing in a couple of hours tops. It's a masterpiece and one that is still worth playing even in this post remake world. With Dragon's Dogma 2 around the corner, I felt that March was finally the time to finish the original game. Yes, I hadn't finished the first game, and this was largely down to the fact that I bounced off it extremely hard upon its initial release, and just never went back to it. It's one of those situations where the game is a bit of a slog, and is absolutely a game that you have to meet on its own unique terms, and personally, some of these aspects were quite at odds with the way that I like to play games. I know it's a good game, I know that all of these things like the fast travel and having to walk long distances and getting a lot of enemy encounters are very much part of the experience, but I just never felt like I had a time to break the back of it and get settled into the world and the rhythm of the game. But finally I did, and I ended up really enjoying it. Now, it's not perfect. There's a lot of the original Dragon's Dogma that feels like a great idea that hasn't been fully realised or fleshed out fully, largely due to the technology available at the time, but even those, at the very least, are cool ideas. And that's the main thing about Dragon's Dogma. While the game itself may have a lot of fairly standard open world game design, underpinning this are loads of smart ideas. Varied combat that rewards you for creating your custom loadout, decisions that actually matter and affect things in a meaningful way, and a real fine balance between arcadey, fast-paced fighting and some Souls-esque strategic challenge. In fact, a lot of the real issues I have with it now stem from how clunky the PC port seems to be. Also, I'm not sure how I avoided spoilers about the final act for 12 years, but my god I'm glad I did, because there's absolutely no way you'll see the endgame coming, never mind the endings. And off the back of finishing that, I went straight into the sequel, and so far, it is everything I wanted the original to be, and more. It's slicker and has a lot of quality of life tweaks, but without ever sacrificing or compromising the vision of the original in the slightest. In fact, I think it speaks volumes that in no point in-game is this referred to as a sequel. It feels very much like a realisation of those half-baked ideas in the original, and I'm so glad that they had the opportunity to actually do this. It looks incredible as expected, and the increased fidelity makes those fights with giant enemies feel truly spectacular. It still has the varied combat that you can customise to your desired playstyle, and the pawn system, which allows you to create your own sidekick and hire other players' pawns to aid you in your game, is even smarter this time around, with each one having a really strong personality that makes them feel so alive, interacting with you, your pawn, and the world around you in clever, unique ways. While the world of the original game feels quite empty as you traverse it, which is a big part of why I bounced off it originally, no doubt, Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the few games to truly understand what Breath of the Wild does that makes it so special and so revolutionary in the open world genre. There is no reward for exploration, for exploration itself 
is its own reward. Exploring the world is fun, it's engaging, it's full of stuff to find, and I'm not talking about fucking treasure chests or collectible trinkets. I mean things like you go left when you could go right at a split in the path and you end up on a 10 hour adventure, or you find a cave in the middle of nowhere and inside are a bunch of bastards who wipe your party out almost immediately. Just having a poke around this dense countryside is great in its own right, and that is something I wish I saw more of post Breath of the Wild. As I'm sure you're aware, the two recent Zelda games, they have these rules that define their worlds, and they're largely around elements and materials. But the genius of those games is how you can bend and break those rules to your advantage. Dragon's Dogma 2 has its own rules, but all of them retain a similar level of consistency. So, for instance, bridges break, whether you do it or an enemy does it for you. Wake stones can bring you back from the dead if you lose all your health, but that also can be applied to literally anyone in the game too. You can catch your pawn if they fall from a height, which means they can catch you too if you jump into their arms from above. It's another one of those things I really love in video games, when a complex rule set is thrown at you from the word go, and then you can bend and break those rules using your own creative interpretation of the tools that the game gives you. Dragon's Dogma and its sequel aren't games for everyone, so I fully expect people to bounce off this in the same way that I bounced off the original, but there's nothing else like it, and if you vibe with it, then you're in for a real treat. It's a game that heaven forbid, allows you to make mistakes, some of them almost game-breakingly unfixable, and you have to live with the consequences of these. People are so used to games just holding your hand and ensuring that you can complete the full thing from start to finish with so little friction that I have seen people complaining about some of the things that can happen in Dragon's Dogma 2 described as bugs, like they're problems with the game which is a truly tragic fucking indicator of where some people's heads are when it comes to video games in 2024. Go watch a fucking movie if you want to guarantee that you'll see the end of something, providing you don't choke to death on your own saliva, you dribbling fucking idiot. I normally script these parts, but I'm having such a hard time actually getting my feelings onto the page about this game. I love Final Fantasy VII, and... I need to be clear here, Final Fantasy VII, the three discs that came out on the PS1. None of the spin-off media, just Final Fantasy VII. The rest of it, I think, is largely awful. So, I was very excited when the remake was announced, and massively disappointed when the remake not only turned out to be a game that was riddled with the tedious bullshit you get with most modern games, but also, as it turns out, not actually a remake, but instead some kind of super convoluted meta sequel. It's fucking irritating, because when that first one, Final Fantasy VII Remake, concentrates on just remaking Final Fantasy VII, it's, it's exceptional. In fact, I'd go as far as saying some of the bits in it are better than the original that I love so much. Anyway, I've really tried with Rebirth, but I just can't. They've removed a lot of the tedious backtracking and uh, tedious fetch quests, but unfortunately have replaced them with open world bullshit. So the game is now split up into several open world hubs that all have the same open world quests in them, and it, it's all the usual rubbish. It's go to a thing, press a button, get reward. Go to a thing, Kill guy, get reward. Sometimes it's go to thing, press button, go back to where you came from, press button, get reward. It's not great. You, your reward is sometimes like a cool bit of character dialogue, but it's not really enough to justify how fucking boring it all is. And that's a real shame, because this one, when it is just remaking Final Fantasy VII, oh, it's, it's again, it's exceptional. It's remaking some of the best stuff from one of the best games ever. And then it... The ghosts appear and there's some weird Elseworlds bullshit where like loads of people who aren't dead are dead and loads of people who did die aren't dead. It's it's a mess. It's it's a load of shite. And I don't really know what they were thinking. No one was asking for a meta sequel. People spent fucking fifteen years asking for a sequel for Final Fantasy Seven. And not one person went, you know what, if they remake Final Fantasy VII, they should make it some kind of super convoluted... Ah, I, I don't know. 
I should have scripted this, it would have been less rambly, but I haven't. And this is what you get. This is what this fucking game's done to me. Anyway, maybe I'll finish it, but I'm in no rush to go back. Now, unfortunately, legendary artist Akira Toriyama passed away at the start of the month, leaving behind him a legacy of some of the best character designs in manga and video game history. Obviously, he's best known for Dragon Ball, but Chrono Trigger's Frog is my personal favourite of his, closely followed by Dragon Quest VIII's King Trode and Yangus. I'll never go to the pub like that again. I promise. Go blimey! The weekend after his death was reported, I played through the original Dragon Quest for the first time properly, after many false starts over the years. It's a game that predates the original Final Fantasy, and it is an even more primitive JRPG than even Square's original effort. But there is still a charm to it, and that is, in a huge way, down to Toriyama's character and enemy designs. I can't say that this is a game that everyone should check out, but as someone who always likes to see the roots of a series or even a genre, I found this to be an interesting and fun little distraction. There's a lot of grinding, but I just stuck on a couple of my favourite YouTube channels that I needed to catch up with, and mindlessly slaughtered my way up a few levels whilst I was supposed to be doing my day job. Which I definitely didn't do if you happen to be my boss watching this. Anyway, rest in peace big man. I recall a quote that has been attributed to a load of different people about how you actually die twice. Once when you stop breathing and once when people stop saying your name and if that is the case, Akira Toriyama is a true immortal. Alright everyone, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. And you know the drill by now, if you like the video, give it a like, leave a comment. If you like the video a lot, you can always subscribe to the channel you'll get more videos and if you really like the videos and you really like the channel then feel free to head over to the patreon page that you can see on screen right now you can drop me two bucks a month and that will get you access to the top secret discord where we can all talk shit together and of course you support me doing things like this in my spare time which is something i'm eternally grateful for um I have started uploading the stream archive from my Twitch streams to the Patreon page. So if you want to catch up with anything that you've missed or if you just want to see some really old streams where I play through games, head over there. Uh, I'm starting to upload them one by one so there's like a nice steady stream of content. It's something extra uh, and a little experiment into maybe doing some exclusive video over there. But the main stuff's still going to be free on the YouTube channel. Anyway, see you next time.